The perioperative COVID-19 defense strategy is being implemented with the goal of preparing the entire perioperative arena for optimized patient and provider protection. This includes preoperative, intraoperative, and postoperative measures. In a previous video, we discussed the importance of patient decontamination and decolonization prior to entering the operating room. In this video, we will focus on the intraoperative measures that can be implemented to reduce transmission once patients arrive to the operating room. These measures can be applied to patients that are suspected or known COVID-19 infected, as well as patients with unknown COVID-19 status. Establishing effective control of viral transmission will reduce virus spread and protect patients and providers today, as well as over the next several months when we resume normal operations and are at high risk for viral resurgence. The intraoperative measures that we will introduce are based on a sound body of evidence and provide a multimodal approach to decreasing transmission while in the operating theater. They will focus on intraoperative hand hygiene, improved environmental decontamination and cleaning, and improved vascular access care. The intraoperative goals will focus on maintaining designated clean and dirty workspaces that will be uniform in all OR locations. The IV pole on the provider's left will be designated as clean and will contain a docket syringe workstation with hub scrub coverings and a hand sanitizer dispenser. The IV pole on the provider's right will be designated as dirty and will contain a wire basket that will be lined with a zip closure bag and used for discarding contaminated equipment and other waste. Note that within this basket will be a separate biohazard bag that will be used for placing the dirty laryngoscope blade and handle following intubation. The provider will use hand sanitizer at least eight times every hour, especially at each of the five World Health Organization moments of hand hygiene. Before patient contact, after patient contact, after contact with a dirty environment, before aseptic tasks, such as injection of medications into IV ports, and after exposure to a bodily fluid. The docket syringe workstation will be used to sanitize medication syringes as well as store them while they are not in use. Every single syringe must be docked for at least 10 seconds prior to patient administration. Syringes can be docked by peeling back the white cover and screwing the syringe into the alcohol well. To remove, simply unscrew and pull out. Hub scrub coverings will be used to disinfect and protect every access port along the IV tubing. The hub scrubs contain small bristles that actively disinfect the IV port as they are placed and removed. Prior to accessing the IV port, twist the hub scrub one full turn, or 360 degrees, and then remove. This engages the bristles and will disinfect the port. Once removed, replace with a new hub scrub every time. Following induction of anesthesia, and once the patient is stable, the provider will perform a post-induction wipe down of their workspace. Using wipes found on the anesthesia cart, they will decontaminate their workspace using a top-down approach and focusing on high-use areas such as the APL valve and the reservoir bag. We will now show you what this looks like in a simulated OR setting. As you can see, there is a clean workstation on the provider's left and a dirty workstation with a wire basket on the provider's right. Notice the provider using hand sanitizer from the clean workstation immediately upon patient arrival and before beginning patient care. Here you see the provider covering all of the IV access ports with the hub scrub coverings that are located in the clean workstation. Notice they are discarding waste into the wire basket on the right. Now the provider is placing their syringes into the docket workstation where they will be stored until induction and throughout the remainder of the case. Notice how the IV tubing is hung from the workstation and kept off the floor at all times.
Once all of the IV access ports have been protected with hub scrub coverings and your induction syringes have been docked in the docket syringe workstation, you are now ready to proceed with the induction process. As the provider is preparing for induction, notice that they will be double gloving, which will allow them to remove the outer set of gloves following intubation. Intubation is one of the dirtiest procedures that is performed and special care is required to prevent unnecessary contamination of the workspace. As they start the induction process, Notice how the hub scrub cap is removed by turning once and is then discarded. It will then be replaced by a clean hub scrub once all medications are given. Throughout induction, notice how each syringe is removed from the docket workstation and is returned to its original alcohol well after medication administration. Notice here how the anesthesia provider is using the dirty wastebasket on the right to hold the oral airway and mask after their use. The goal here is to avoid placing dirty items on the anesthesia cart and further contaminating the provider's workspace. As a provider performs intubation, notice how the endotracheal tube is clipped to the IV pole on their right, allowing easy access without additional assistance. Once intubation is complete, the outer gloves are used to cover the laryngoscope blade and handle, and they are then placed into the biohazard bag inside the wastebasket, and the bag is then sealed. Once the airway is secured and patient is stable, the provider then washes their hands and performs the post-induction wipe down. Notice here the top-down approach that is being used as well as the close attention that is being paid to areas of high use, including the APL valve and the reservoir bag, both of which are highly contaminated during the induction process. Throughout the remainder of the case, it is important to remember to wash your hands at any of the five WHO moments of hand hygiene, as well as to decontaminate your workstation often. This concludes the instructional video that covers the intraoperative component of the COVID-19 defense strategy.